Hello folks and welcome back to the South American Minor Closed Qualifiers. Here we are of course with some more matches of the day and it's certainly set to be quite the interesting one. Of course, two teams somewhat mismatched some may say. Of course, a, a relatively high ranking team in the region. We've got ourselves like he's at number 6 in South America. Meanwhile, their counterparts, Redemption, yeah, looking too pretty. They're over and down in 18, not collecting many of the points on HLTV. Now, if that's anything to go by, plus recent results, then, well, this is going to be quite the interesting best of three. But we'll have to see how it all pans out as we do look to dive on straight after this one. Of course, the ninth round is done. Now it is just a waiting game as we settle ourselves in for what will be an interesting best of three indeed. Looking at the veto here, if I can get it up, it looks like it's not loaded. Oh, there we go. It's going to be Train, Nuke, and then Dust2. So quite a unique set of maps as well. And we've got Dust2, which is a little bit more sort of on the looser, dare I say, aim style of things. But the first two maps are a very well-structured Counter-Strike. Quite intense maps for two teams, Train and Nuke respectively. Nuke being a... Uh, well, quite a quaint choice. Not necessarily the, the greatest fan of the map myself, but uh, it does certainly provide some uh, interesting matches of CS, that is for sure. Of course, a warm welcome to all you folks at home. I see you in chat. I will be keeping an eye on it, given that it's a solo cast. I'm not exactly going to be going full uh, try hard for you. We'll be sort of interacting with chat here and there and just keeping it fairly on the casual side. At the end of the day, it's a solo cast and we can keep it relaxing. We're have a good time. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat as well. We are just waiting for both teams to ready themselves up and then we can go. Looks like a pause has been called. It's actually quite an interesting match, or, or matchups all of today, to be honest, when you look at really all of the games that are taking place throughout the various different sort of minor close qualifiers. that are all happening concurrently. It's a busy day of CS, I'll tell you that. Of course, fairly early on into the bracket, we will be getting our top four teams in the conclusion of this best of three. Of course, the winner moving forward into our semi-final, who, depending on the outcome of Sharks vs. Inflames, We'll be, uh, I imagine, playing Sharks. I have pretty pretty good faith in that lineup, in all honesty. Start to think, though, that we might actually be live, and that the GoTV might have just had a few shenanigans right at the start. We did have an issue where we had to change. But I saw a knife round, we didn't see a pistol. So I'm not really sure what's happened there. <laughs> But it certainly looks like we're playing some, some actual CS, which is, uh, well, I'll, I'll put that one down to the Go TV. If that's true, though, the score is 4-1, to one, so we know that at least. That's actually a pretty sick shot, straight to the flick there. Investity flash will go over. She has to be very careful, just tithering through the smoke. All the smokes are down, so it's going to make life rather hard for this retake to come through, but it will get upside on heaven. Quick punishment, but a kill is a kill. Going to help them as they push on into the site itself. The teammate takes down Yell, and from there it all comes down to one M4. Oh, on its lonesome nade in hand. The fuse being stuck. He's going to dive on down. Swaps out. Finds the headshot. That is huge. Thankfully, the kit is in play, but cutting it very, very close. I don't think they've got it. Ali, straight on the defuse. A matter of milliseconds to pull through. It looks like I've, I've just had confirmation we did in fact miss the pistol. Things didn't look quite right as we did have an issue with the GoTV. Apologies. With that said, at least we know we actually have some counter shot to commentate now, right? Like, originally we were sort of just waiting patiently for a casual restart to come through. Ooh. Nice deep T-Con nade there. Let's see if they can maybe find a bit of early damage. Unfortunately, not going to do too much. Only 9 HP. Push comes through, the pistols will trade away. So far, so good. Destiny, maybe knock down a 52 HP and he gets an M4. Or an Orc, sorry, for his troubles. 
Ooh, let's see Zerf pushing another reload. That's a huge kill. Already in a three on two. The Gulp is in play, playing, of course, from the back of the trains. Getting on top of green may not be the right decision. With the Orp being there, just watching. Well, they will sneak in for a bomb plant, and they do have Destiny holding on to Connector. That means it's effectively a 1v3 on the site, as Cryo's an easy frag to find. It's the headshot angle. Destiny was dinked to 15 HP, but he got the first shot off, and yes, he could tank the headshot there as well. But the result is always likely to be the same there. Destiny gets the frag, and we see just that Orp all on its lonesome. Of course, sitting towards Ivy, will try and back away, I imagine. Can be spotted. And there's the defensive smoke, Ooh, sitting close to it. Not so sure about that one, but I guess it's going to just be the shotgun roll. So far, so good, but it will be the spray through. And a more iconic duo, a smoke and an org. Another unfortunate round for Redemption to lose, in all honesty. They managed to get their opponents down to just pistols and Kevlar. And we, oh, we saw the result. T-Side were able to overturn it, crush Redemption's economy once more. Leaves them now on the CZ Eagles. Not really a huge amount of weaponry. In fact, we are going to see two players even just go for the flat USP and Deagle play with no Kevlar behind them. Really just emphasizes the lack of money in play for the CT side here. And we'll be looking at 6-2, a great start for the T-Side early on in this game. Of course, the York going to be looking for that pick down through T-Com. So far, so good. Destiny finding just another moments before as then the deep nades will go through Ivy. That's going to clear out this close position here. Ooh, the Molly's a little bit short. She's a flash can come through. And it could well be a double, but he runs out of ammo. The CZ haunting him there as he will be traded almost immediately. Thankfully, it is just one player remaining for the CT side. So even with a moment of light, the outcome will likely still be the same. The orc will be picked up, but a quick headshot will solve that problem. As LT side continue to build up their scoreline in this game. 6-2 now, looking for their 7th. They are looking hungry, and it'll be another pause to be called as well. This looks like a, ta a technical one. Of course, if it's a tactical, we will see on our screens the uh, lovely graphic that says pause 1 out of 4 or 2 out of 4 and so on, with a countdown as well. Just waiting for this one to wrap itself up. There we go, the pause will be called off. Somewhat curious to actually see what the odds are for this match. Let's take a look. If I click that button, it should actually load up. Oh, look at that. There we go, the GG bet odds, of course. 1.68 to 2.09. Looks like it's based upon the second map as well. Yeah, interesting odds. Not too surprised to see them that way. I definitely would. Give us a solid prediction of a 2-0, I think, in favour of this T-side here, but we have seen a couple signs of life from Redemption, so only time will tell. I would say if they want to get going, kind of now is really the time. Of course, round 9, they're on the full buy. Already rather limited utility, to be honest, but with that said, this round is quite critical for them. If they continue to drop full buy after full buy here, they are going to get ground out of the first half, and the problem with Train, it's not one of those maps who will be going something like... 13-2 you know, down, or, or even sort of 11-4. Especially on that CT side. With that said, Jewel will come through towards Ivy. It is going to be a bit of a tough one for Destiny. Comes out with just 4 HP remaining. The entirety of this T side all bunched up through Ivy, but with two core players missing. Where they are will bring a mystery to the CTs, as they've yet to do any discovery towards B, but that's huge. Cryo may well have spotted Yell sneaking out towards up, but that's an easy headshot to find. The advantage continues to fall in their way. Shallow to fall as well. Means it is all going to come down to this last minute Ivy push. First kill comes through, second will be traded, but a 3 HP 1v3. Today is not the day.
We have a very quiet chat tonight, don't we? I was expecting a, a bit more sort of discussion to help us go through the, the quite long evening of CS. But it looks like it is going to be a dead silent. Let's see, though, we'll get away with the AWP, so... Not really too unhappy with that. Three rounds, of course, for our CT side as well. Sort of lives up to just how important it is for them to be getting those rounds that we talked about in the previous round here. Got to keep it going, though. I think they've a real struggle at connecting them together. We want to see them at least get sort of a couple of rounds back-to-back -back here, if possible. Comes in towards the side. Cello as well looking towards the back of trains. Yeah, is very close to Tcon. That could prove to be a problem as he continues to put in the work. Triple kill thus far. More can be done. What an all out left in play. Quite a dodgy 1v3, but a good opportunity. Let's make it a little bit easier. So far, so good, but there you have it. Two for one. Cello coming out on top there. Seven to three. Being solidified. Once more, I see an army of pistols in play. I do like the deagle on train. It can certainly provide some interesting moments. There's lots of long sort of hallways, choke points across the map. You can really work some nice picks out with it. Oh, you've got to have the aim to back it up as well. Case in point here, Ali playing towards E-Box. Top of brown train. It's working out wonderfully. A couple of quick picks. A CZ at range. That's not something you see every day. Collecting the headshot there on the air. We'll make things a little hairy here. Ooh, shouldn't be able to get that pick. It's all starting to fall to pieces now. The upside is still a very winnable round for the T side, but they have to play it safe. They really need... To, to be quite frank now, it's all on. Is that to make a play? It's got like a little on the site, but needs to check every single angle. As, oh, you failed the jump. Nope, it's over there, buddy. The minute you feel the jump and you make the sound, that P250 eats you alive. Now we are back in what seems to be another 1v3. 35 seconds remain, and well, losing the jewel at long range to the Galil. We'll finish things off. 7 4 now, a great round picked up by Redemption there. Just taking advantage of perhaps over peaking from the T side. So a great early opening pick coming from Ali, but then we shouldn't really be seeing the CZ putting in that work as well. Likewise, being able to push in close pop and, and not being aware of that fact is just another small error that Redemption were able to capitalize on. Quick and easy clean up, and well, we're going to see more development for the CT side. It's not going to be a little bit more impressive, to be honest. They've broken the economy, which is going to be even more of a boon for them, and potentially puts them in a chance to equalize their score and even win the half, which, honestly, I didn't think I was going to be saying that coming into this best of three, but map one is spicing up a little bit.
So far, so good. Keeping it clean. Not making the same mistake their opponents have made. Just as I say that, they're able to sneak in a bomb plant. Thankfully not going to be the end of the world. Oh. Ali, don't get glocked, buddy. Oh. Just not what you want to see. A long-range Glock kill. Spam it away. They will clean up nonetheless and defuse to be found as well. Just going to grab the AKs and there you have it. A 6 7. The big thing to ask now is will we see that equalization point? Every penny being spent up by the two side, but they've got the full util, the AWP in play as well. Looking forward to seeing where those two orbs will duel against each other as once more it is going to be the aggressive style of play. It works out for the terrorists already. Diving out through TCOM, pushing to the left hand side of hell, picking up an early frag. The orb boat putting in the work towards upper B. That's a double kill so far, looking for a triple as well, and you're just walking into it. That's three. Left, right, good night. The orc will peek out. That's going to be a fourth. Not what you want to see. Seven to seven. They have equalized the comeback well and truly on. Now looking to bag themselves to half victory, which just puts them in such a great position moving forward. Already. Early jewels come in as they come rushing out through A. Shell like Destiny both to get the entries. Again, it's the aggression of this T side that really just works wonders for them. But the problem is they can't close it out. They get these early picks, but they just get whittled down towards the end of the round. Really just losing steam almost. In this one, it'll just continue to brawl on the site over and over again. And that's where they finally run into some luck and secure themselves. The 15th and final round of the half. And really what's interesting when you look at it is... Yes, we did see a rather dominant opener, but a lot of that stemmed from the pistol round as well. If you remove the pistol round from the equation, we could actually see some more rounds on the board if for redemption. So, it's uh, looking like it could be a pleasantly surprising best of three. That is a crispy shot. <laughs> oh, buddy! <laughs> buddy, not like this! You hit the sickest shot in the match, and then you jump off and you commit suicide. You just... You hate to see it, folks. You really do. It's Destiny, number one tap collected for the CT side, though. Will at least pick up a kill in exchange for their teammate dying. That clock, though, getting rather close here, sitting up close to the yellow train, of course, as the bomb goes down. Now pushing through Brown, double kill looking likely here, if they're not careful. Destiny will swing in from behind, but long range USP shot through a tough gambit to land. So far, so good. He's going to get straight on the bomb to try and bait them to push close, but with two players alive, they'll just use one to spot and play it real safe. It looks like Destiny might have read it, though. Going to get the early duel, makes it a one for one. Now it's all on Ali to play this one perfectly. Once again, the bait defuse comes through. Ali not making a single step, letting his nose position. Finally spotted. Destiny will have to push up and get aggressive. Lands the one tap, but bam. No time left. Great round. Well played by Redemption in the afterplant as well. And that will lead to a pistol victory for them. And ultimately, equalization once more. Somewhat curious to see how this all pans out now. 
still reeling off of the fact that you get such a nice opening frag and then you just jump off the ladder, but at the same time, we've all been there. It happens to the best of us. This time around, looks like Redemption are opting for a three-man duo towards Ivy. Going to see what they can work out there. Cello just going to overexpose himself somewhat. Tcom just getting aggressive on top of Green Train and instead of going for the crouch peak to the left or right or even spotting it further back deeper down the train, just gets right up close and personal, showing off his full body. It's a bit of a simple kill to shut down, to be honest, if you don't land your first shot when you're getting that aggressive. Interesting now will be have they sold the fake? We did just see the rotation come through from Destiny. He's gone towards Con. Usually the MP9 also going to go clear out B. And concurrent to all of this, Redemption, they come flying out Ivy. They've picked up so much map control out of thin air. Yes, we're seeing a couple of kills come through, but it's all going the way of this T sub. We saw, you know, maybe one or two rains, but it's just not going to be enough. Pomp plant will be nice and simple. And that is going to leave an MP9 up against three once more. Seems like I said 1v3 many a time. And it looked like the result will always be the same. That one, one player, all on his lonesome. Well, we'll have a good crack at it, but I imagine we'll be taken down momentarily. You know, great position from Cry, using elevation to his advantage. P250 is going to see if they can try and hold down the fort somewhat. A marching army. Moving towards B, walking into a scope. And remix and well, I imagine he'll have a great time here just tapping them down. Case in point, leaving just one now. Alley now, looking to fender off any early B aggression. Meanwhile, the key note here is that Redemption just not showing anything in Tcon now, refusing to take even a chance at a duel. Just going to bunch up rather heavily towards B. Runs its risks, because if we do see the CT side start to push and prod, then, well, could well prove to be an issue. Getting all that information that it is just going to be this B all in could be problematic, but hasn't been found. It will just be a simple flash to tell the tale. Now we're going to see the aggression come in from behind. The push has been made. The bomb should go down. Cello and Zank will sort of kill a piece. Ali will trade. May well be too little too late though. Smoke nice and defensive on the site. Allows you to play the upper angle here. Just the ridge of the yellow train. Picks up just one more. And they line it up. Lovely stuff. The spray transfer. MFP just finding both the frags. And even just Kenji once more with the AWP in hand. He should just save it, and that will put Redemption up to 11 rounds. And folks, this is live. I'm a real person. This is real Counter-Strike. And it's all being brought to you live from, I would say the UK, but I imagine the GoTV's in Ukraine. But, uh, yeah. <laughs>
MP9. I'm gonna just dive up deep through B-Halls now. No more allowance. Not this B-Hall in style of play. Instead, they're just gonna walk right up into them, but... Cello, buddy, you've, you've got no one helping you out there. You're all on your own, and it just kind of goes wrong. You give up a free kill. And that's where things go from bad to worse, because your team, they're not exactly well endowed with weaponry right now either. You've got two CZs in play, and all for an MP9. I've seen better buys, that's for sure. Thankfully, they do have money in the bank, of course. It's not exactly a full buy, but still, it doesn't leave them in a great situation in round 20. Execute. I'm gonna take cold now. Imagine me, I gotta see the wall of smoke sit. Yep, yeah, one in the back of the bomb train, trying to allow the plant to get in. One towards Ivy as well to deny any presence there. The benefit is that what well, does work out for a fake, problem is that you've kind of got to hit the shots even taking the B site, and well, we aren't really seeing that to be honest. They're getting chewed up alive. Ali will get one, but the trade wants more. Presence and connector will help them out massively. And that just saves the day. Miel will lose his life trying to come in from behind, and we've got ourselves a 12-8 lead, and it continues to grow. The face of Never Hating Guy in chat sums it all up. It's just kind of shocking. Did not expect this at all. Cello spraying through the smoke, gonna rip away a double kill. Almost out of thin air, but unfortunately, Redemption still have two players in not too bad of a position, but the one upside they've got is they have control of the bomb. It's gonna make life a little difficult, but they're giving picks away. Not what you want to be doing, you're at a 4v2, just group up, stay alive, secure the round. Don't give them the opportunities to carve out these 1v1s, especially when you've got an AWP in play. A pick coming through. Great shot. That's not a teak on there. Loving the patience from Cello though. Just gonna be holding IVs, expecting the play to happen, and he will just be waiting for it. Gonna lose the jewel though, just land the first shot, but will not be enough for the AK. Overpowered as we see just the contact play work wonders for redemption so far. Remix now thinking about finally making the move out. They're expecting some sort of presence from behind, hence the slowdown here. Cry then and picking up the bomb, needs to know when he can get towards site and really what the game plan is for the plant as well. Of course, he wants to be covered by his teammate. Using the AWP though, a little ballsy. Requires the flick and well, we ask, Remix delivers. That's a quad kill for him as Redemption continue to collect on these rounds. 13-8 is now the scoreline. A 4v2, given up. If that doesn't summarize this map so far, I don't know what does. We thought it was going to be a bit of a one-sided affair, and to be frank, a 2-0 that'd be over before we even got started, but Redemption are here to play. They're certainly delivering so far. Destiny. I'm going to dive into the three, but won't be enough. Remix will be there to trade once more. Zan does have a cheeky position, though. Slides it out through Pop. Gets a double kill with the MP9, and, well, it brings us full circle. Back to a 39. 
This game is so random. I mean, you hit the nail on the head. I don't know what I'm watching. It's a little bit wild, isn't it? You want to see the ping? I can show you the ping. Let's make sure I bring up this and then I can do this. There you go. You see it's uh, pretty well balanced. They're basically playing on land for all intents and purposes. Not quite, but it's a, a very well set up server. Once more though, reduction going for the Play. The only difference this time around though is they've not cleared out upper at all and that will punish them. And lose a player. Fortunately the Molotovs are a little bit late. They're gonna smoke it anyway, but bomb plant's still guaranteed and Man Remix is just on fire right now, isn't he? He is carrying his team through blood, sweat and tears. Triple kill for him in this round. Might even go for another quad if possible. Destiny might just back away though. Realizing money is uh, not exactly in the greatest of positions here. For the CT side, they have got a couple of players with a few thousand in the bank, but they've also got Cello and Destiny himself with nothing at all. So saving anything at this point will prove to be rather helpful. Pressure now, seemingly the same in grace of the CT side, but the Molly gets thrown. They still let a pick come through though, and in fact, they lose, arguably, their best player right now. Just ducking and weaving through the flames, it works wonders. Remix will fall, and that will leave an early 4v5. Now, the ult will be picked up, but I'm not quite sure they'll be able to deliver in a fashion that Remix has been able to in the past. For the folks in chat, I would love to talk to you, but you speak in Portuguese, and unfortunately, it's uh, not my strong suit. More than happy, though, to answer any questions or just have a general chit chat around the game if anyone fancies it. Just drop a question in the chat, of course. We're keeping it fairly casual here, as it is just a solo cast for one of the close qualifiers, of course. We want to make sure we really bring the hype and the excitement as we get deeper into these qualifiers. That's a great flash. Nice and high, the bounce is just above the ramp, and from there, which guarantees an elite kill. He's going to force them to make the push, though, decide just to set a play around or two. Sam plays a good position on top of White Train, that is going to pick up just another frag here, but Cryo getting deep towards oil should mean that it could be a double trade. A little bit of a whiff, but the position is good, and that's going to be more important here, providing his teammates don't just disappear from the site. That's where things start to crumble, as now, instead of just being in a good forward position, He's got to fall back and really try and work his way back in again. Destiny going to save himself with timing. He was looking at the bomb train and with just a second to spare, flicks back towards white and that will save his life. These pistols are not going to accomplish too much here. I should just get picked apart. Captain Glacier, how are you doing, buddy? I see you 
how come nobody cast mythics matches? Uh, I honestly, I, I don't know. I'm sure there are. They, they should be being casted. I believe every match is casted, but uh, I may be wrong, so don't quote me on that. and 11 though. One thing to be thinking about here for the CT side is that they don't have the chances. Every round now really has to go their way. Cello. Find myself a lovely double. Ali will treat back through Pop Doc, but then they reset. They've gained no real ground for the kill, and the CTs have pucked up an advantage. It's likely to go further as they catch Yell on the walkout. It's going to make life a little tougher. They can move back to B here, but there are two players on either side, so the battle really is going to be the same. Nobody was able to cast it without falling asleep. Well, Dread, that's a little harsh. Um, only Flum switched. Yeah, it might be the case that because they were streaming the game themselves, the coverage was there, and perhaps there was another game that could uh, could could have done with the coverage. So, could it could have been the reason? Again, not speaking for for any officially here. I'm just just speculating. It was a joke, really. They used auto shotties and auto snipers and 116 one. Well, sometimes these things happen. <laughs> That's interesting. We've got two players towards B, but they are playing rather backwards positions, especially given that Han is just leaving the site effectively. And given the aggressive tendencies of Redemption, the way they just all in on the B site. Uh, I like it, but it's going to rely on the fast rotations and the first kills coming through. If this becomes a 5-on-5 five five retake, I mean, the round is done. Molly will go down, though. They are going to take the early duel. So far, so good. First kill found. They need to be aware of the fact that trains are being pushed. And, of course, just do good work from up and above. How has this man found three kills? How is he getting away with that? Well, credit where credit is due. The passive play works out. They sit back and... When the push comes through, then they make the jump, charging up through upper, and likewise defending the aggressive push from below, and it all works out wonderfully. They use the elevation to their advantage, and we got ourselves a one-round gap as things reach 14-13. As I said, resident sleeper content. Well, that is a switch way to some other game I've ever seen one before. That said, keeping a close eye on this matchup is, it really has been quite something. Fifty seconds. They're trying to repeat the B play, but it is all just one big ruse. 
I said selling them to get themselves up through Ivy. Problem is, the contact plays a little early. You haven't actually baited a single rotate. You will get a pick for your troubles, but all that's going to do is affirm, hey, they were faking it. And now it comes down to just the jewels. You've got to find the frags. So far, so good, though. They've got the quick rotators in towards Pop Dog. That means they can jump when the team had to come out through Ivy. And the site effectively falls into their palms because the CT side are losing the jewels. It's a bad smoking connector, but I don't think they're going to be able to get out of it. They really are relying on their teammates' back trains, and they don't really have any angles here to find frags. Your mic sounds kind of weird. It shouldn't sound kind of weird. Let me listen to myself and see if it does. Um, no, it, oh, it kind of sounds a little buzzy. Is that what you're getting at? I'm not sure. I need a little bit of help here to switch out because uh, it might be because I'm talking too close to it. If I talk back like here, it might be fine. You're not going to see this for 60 seconds, but when you do, you can let me know. It might be that I just leaned in a little bit too close. Interesting choice of a pause. It does sound a bit like the car said doesn't have a pop filter. I, I do have a pop filter, but I think the mic might just be having a bit of a moment. Can't really make any popping sounds to test it, unfortunately, but I have just changed something on the mixer, so hopefully that should help a little bit. But again, you guys aren't going to see this for another 60 seconds. <laughs> Makes life a little difficult for the on-the-fly changes. Yeah, I thought it would sound better when I'm a little further back, and also I've changed some stuff as well, so it's, uh... I think it was just the condenser being a little bit too, uh... too agitated for what is quite a quiet room now. With that said, it's 15.13. It would be a fool to miss the action here, as we may well see Redemption take a surprise victory. One that I don't think many people expected, and the odds certainly didn't predict either. There we go. Perfect. Glad to hear it, guys. Thank you for the help with that, someone and dreads. Flying hits as well. I see you. That said, the push will come through. Zan going to find himself a double before dying in the flames. Of course, he went for the early molly towards Bat White, but wasn't going to be enough to deny him the double kill. Well, we three takes all, but the rotations are still coming through from the CT side, and that's what we're waiting for now, is redemption. We'll just set ourselves up in some afterplots, going for the kill. TNG, but that won't be enough. He'll still stand, just 41 HP remaining, but still standing nonetheless. The bomb is ticking. The smoke's somewhat helping him out here, but trade's not really where you want this one to be going. Cello putting the work on site, quick trade up and above, that will be enough. I just need to get on that defuse yelp nice and quickly, please. There we go. Five second defuse. Happy days. Cutting it very close, but happy days nonetheless. 15-14. Yeah, it definitely is uh, quite an enjoyable game, to be honest, never hitting guy. I really am quite surprised. And when you look at the two teams from a regional perspective, in terms of just South America, there is a bit of a mismatch in skill, you know, when you just look at it from that point of view. When you add a, a third dimension to it, instead of just looking at the the rankings and so on, actually look at who these teams play. Again, it, it just looks like we are going to see bet a better team from the CT side, from Ince, but Redemption are really quite surprised. We 
almost over time. Now on the table. No moves coming out yet from the T side. They are just holding quite firm. Little to no Ivy presence. They will gain a little more top doggers. We do see the aggression come through. Early pick found with no trade available. Oh, Yelp missing out on the chance to get a pick there as well because he had the smoke in his hand. It's not what you want to see. I imagine now the objective for Ali is just to make as much noise as possible, throwing every piece of utility. He has deep down through Ivy as his team push out through TCOM. Mix will find one, but KNG quick the trade, brings us fair and square back to a three on three, but the comes through, starts to turn the tide, but we're back again. It's all or nothing. Cryo and Ali. Sam will drop on down, he's right behind them, they have little to no idea, and that's going to crush them. Ali, you know he's there, but can you survive? The flash has been thrown, the headshot angle is held, and just like that, we are going to overtime. 15-15. Josh, 27, I would definitely say that the favourites for this one will be into Redemption have pretty high odds. And while we talk of the odds, I can uh, I can help you out with that. I can show you what the odds are on our good friends over at GG Bet. Let's see if I can do this right. Am I any good at it? There we go. The live odds, of course, are starting to even out somewhat here. 1.87 versus 1.87. For those of you who did bet prior to the match beginning, though, and aren't relying on the live odds, you would have seen a vastly different picture. Redemption had something like 9-1 to one at one point when I was looking on HLTV. It was looking like a pretty dicey matchup. talk of the ping once more. Take a look, it's right there. It's all basically 10 ping. Everyone is pretty happy. No real surprise, it's the play Redemption are bringing up here it is just once more heavily based towards B. Destiny, maybe will have some ideas, he's getting no response there. That'll prompt Cello pushing him from behind, gets a free kill. And Walt is on away. Sam has to be very careful. He is super close to the double up. Remix and FP. Smoke will go down deep towards Vienna, though. That'll help out this orb some watch as Sam does his job so far. Picks up one, makes it to two. Lack of communication. Really shining through there, to be honest. Ali will finally trade, but not without taking a huge hit. Taken down to just two HP as the bomb is planted. Making the retake a whole lot easier for the CT side. The smoke. Will be a little bit of a boon for them. All it takes though is one good nade. That'll be done. Unfortunately, heads towards Ali's teammate instead. That is going to keep him alive, but not a lot more moments before. He will eventually fall along with Ali himself. And there you go. 16 to 14. The CT side starting strong. Someone, I hope you got your odds placed on GG Bet. Use code CHARGE, I believe, if you want to uh, to get some extra awards. I definitely agree. I think that if Redemption are going to have a, a real chance at its best of three, it, it banks pretty heavily on the outcome of this first map. I think that, given just the results I've seen, by no means am I preaching myself as a, as a hard and fast expert of the South American region, but just from the research I have done, really does feel like one of those matches where if Redemption aren't able to secure the map one victory, I think morale and really just the team play is really going to start to drop off and we've already started to see little bits of that from communication falling short. That's really where the CD side have been able to capitalise to be honest. 
And I think if they drop Mat 1, that's only going to further become an issue. Oh, yeah, well, you actually hit him through the smoke there, buddy. That is kind of disgusting. Twenty seconds now on the clock. Redemption. Just going to be looking to carry these weapons forward. Of course, given the setup here for OT, the full buys are a little costly, and you can leave yourself on the third and final round of the half a little strapped for cash. All in all, pretty smart decision here, just to take that AWP and AK through into our third and final round here before we head on over to our halftime switch. Slight change of plan. They will get themselves an early pick, which is well, definitely a different approach than what we've seen in previous rounds, where it's kind of just been bombed away. One benefit may well be Yell. He's positioned quite deep into Ivy. Certainly raises some questions over really what's possible here. If Redemption do go just charging down. If they play their cards right, Cello could either throw... Well, he actually can't throw a flash. He's not got one. Yellow might be able to help him out. It's kind of unfortunate. Yellow... Cello needs to really be able to trade that as well. I think he's just going to lose his life. And it just kind of goes from bad to worse now. Cryo coming in from Pop, that should pretty much seal the deal. KNG having a moment in the spotlight, but not one that's going to change the outcome of the round, unfortunately. Will be a plant. And that should be that. I really don't see a way back in here. Who's that? It's unfortunate, but it's always the way. Their set up towards Ivy, it was good, sort of, at a high level, but they're actually missing a key flash, I think. That kind of came back to bite them. And also, when the push finally came through, they weren't even playing together. This just kind of further exacerbates the issue. Pretty significant round here for Redemption. They need the momentum, I feel like, in this second half. Start the CT side strong. Already, Mint's going to get themselves out between Brown Train. Look to see if they can make the jump through the smoke. Good angle here from FP, but Ali will find the jump. That means FBA can dive right into the fray. We do see a quick two for one, but all in all, Redemption taking the lead here. Just KNG and Zan, and they are getting picked apart like flies. All that remains 
is out. He's over an ivy. Oh, well, if we spray it down, simply so. Double Molly set up, one from one team. Each really just trying to push back this Ivy control. A little bit more utility put in towards Ivy. I'm going to see a further push. That looks like the edge will actually begin to fall back. That is going to set up into meanwhile towards this B site. Bomb is shuffling back again though, so really quite uncertain where they're going to be heading here. 50 seconds now on the clock and it really is going to come down to the wire. 17-17, a lot to play for. Overtime of course on the line here. The winner of this round will set themselves up on a good step forward to take the victory. Carrying that success in the map two of the best of three and one step closer ultimately to the goal of competing on the minor stage. Mint's making the push now. So far so good. First kill will go their way. Bomb plots come through as well. It's going to be a five on four. Connector likely to be the next area that the duel will take place. But it's delayed somewhat as FP does not want to get aggressive. This only gets... Matters worse for Redemption is they're not grouped up anymore. They're going to make a lot of singular pushes. It's all going to be on Ally to win his duel. It's all going to win the 1v1 plays. Cake some point. We see it here. Zan flying into the site. Yeah, filling in the gaps. But again, the 1v1s. Inch just trading them down. And it all comes down to one player. Really ironic given what bit the CT side. And I'll have to give it up. It will be 18-17. The T side march on forward. Yeah, you're pretty bang on, really. No reason, of course, not to buy head armor in those scenarios, because the AK is going to one-shot you in the head no matter the outcome. Head armor or no head armor, so you can save the extra few hundred. Use it to buy a, a nade or two. Especially in OT, every little helps. We start to see a bit of a clean sweep, it become... Well, money can become a bit of a problem. Even with 10k, it's, uh, yeah, they can definitely see a few issues. Talking of issues, though, it looks like we might be seeing a tech issue on the server as well. I'm, I'm hearing some typing in chat. Makes me think a cancel might be being called. Looks like we're seeing maybe a little bit of lag, but could well be the GoTV. Not too sure. I'll make no assumptions for now, but, yeah, pretty, pretty confident there's going to be a reset being called here. Looks like some sort of issue, potentially with the server, potentially with the player. GoTV looked a little choppy though, but we'll have to see. Yeah, when they start with 10k though, just to look back to that, that doesn't necessarily mean you buy everything you want and you don't care about money, because 
that 10k can actually disappear very quickly. Looks like the reload has come through, folks, but now it is just a nice little patient waiting game for the pause and such to be undone. Of course, just a reminder, it's just a first map and a best of three. A lot more still on the table for both of these teams. It really is going to come down to if Redemption can win this map, I think they set themselves up in a great position to move forward and actually have a chance at winning the thing. Though, on paper, it shouldn't even be this far, which really is the, the big surprise of it all, to be honest. Do bear with us, folks. We are just waiting now for admin confirmation, I believe. Good to see a nice showing out here though tonight for this match. A lot of CS, of course, available to watch nowadays. I think we've got four concurrent minor matches going on each day at the same time. I do wonder how the other matches are going on. Looks like Pain versus Evidence is 9-8 right now. Reapers took a 16-4 Mat 1 victory over Space Stress. And in Flames versus Sharks was a 16-12 victory in favour of Sharks as they move forward into map number two. Of course, over on the North American side of things now, we are going to see Altima versus Thunder Logic. That's a 9 6 right now. Strings Llama versus uh, Salem G, 14 8. The Quest and Hollow over 9 5. And X Zone versus Good Game PR is a 3 0. So those games are only just getting started. Meanwhile, the South American best of threes are in full swing. And we do, of course, have all of the minor action taking place right through in so what will be. 6 a.m. CST. Uh, I believe it's going to wrap up around midnight EDT as well. So we are sort of covering the globe there. Not no, not so sure on what the time is over in South America, unfortunately. But I'll tell you what, we'll have a cheeky Google search and we'll find out. 
there we go. So it's what half past seven in the evening in Brazil. Um, I reckon we'll still have games going in Brazil at around two a.m. Then, so sort of like quick napkin math. We've lost to Go TV as well, so that is going to now prove to be a bit of an issue. Folks, what I'm going to do is to save the absolute silence. I'm going to throw us to a lovely short break screen while I figure this out. Do bear with me. I will, uh, I'll do what I can. And then I'll be right back with you with some more quality Counter-Strike between Redemption and Ints. Charge up your game with excitement. Highest odds on the market. Coverage of all live and pre-match events. Place your bets with Solid Bookmaker and win with your favorite teams. Take what's rightfully yours with GG.Bet.